This week actually is the first ever Miracle Mission. It's our opportunity to give the gift of sound to those in need and we've chosen to do that in Selma and Tuskegee where there's limited access for healthcare in general but specifically hearing healthcare. The people here are concerned with a lower level of Maslow's hierarchy of needs than what you or I are on a, a daily basis. Their largest concerns are some of the basics, um, food, shelter, and so they don't even think about their hearing health care. The average income for this area is extremely low. I dare say that in America there's probably not many places more in need than where we're sitting right now. And uh, truly, if you went around and looked at the city and looked at the people, uh, you would understand. Uh, last week, there was a shooting in front of the church while our guys were out trying to allow people to, to come in to be tested. So uh, imagine your worst uh, ideas of uh, a setting where people could grow up and live, and this is pretty much right in the center. This church, the day of the what they call the Bloody Sunday, they lined up here. So it was kind of exciting for the young people in a way, but it was also frightening. There's been a lot of change. Uh, there's been a lot of instability, a lot of turnover. And yet in the midst of that, there, there's still parents who want their kids to do well in school, um, who want financial stability, um, who, who would like to get out of that situation uh, that's not what it used to be and to move on to something better, to move up to something better. I don't talk much because, you know, with this hearing and all that, and the virus, I don't go out and I don't talk. And maybe eventually I might not be able to hear at all. But a doctor here in Selma, he wants to sell me some $7,000 hearing aids. I went to another one he wanted for. I just couldn't afford to buy them. I really can't. So hopefully it's going to help me some and make me feel better. I hope you guys can, can help me out some. Because of the hearing aids that we're gifting today, they are immediately noticing a difference. And um, even through the masks that we're wearing, you can see it in their eyes and they're so thankful, especially during a very difficult time where people are feeling isolated with, with the pandemic. My hearing one is like it's supposed to be. I am so grateful and so thankful. You all are just a gift from God, got to be, because I need them and I really couldn't give them. Um, well, I'm looking forward to, I guess, having confidence again, you know, in the real world. And if it wasn't for this opportunity, I don't think I would be able to afford this. Um, as soon as I got home, I had a conversation with my mom without telling her. I think she realized that I could understand everything. And um, I did tell her after that conversation, like, I have them in my ear right now. She cried. I feel, I feel good. I, I do feel like there's a difference in my confidence. I just thank you. I got something to be thankful for. Like I said, I didn't have the money to go and do it, and I was hearing everybody say that he already cost so much money, so I never went to try because I didn't, I know I didn't have that kind of money. Thank you for everything. Some of these people, they've never left their town. So driving an hour east is just an anomaly to them. Um, so being able to reach those people that we would have never seen 
that's that's the biggest thing. I expected a lot of mild losses, um, but we had so many that were severe that that I mean, you knew they knew they had a hearing loss. There was no doubt about it. It wasn't one of these things. Well, hey, he can't hear anything, or she can't hear anything. It was everybody knew, and, and for them to come in and kind of get the the treatment and the validation to know how bad it is, and then to know we'd be able to help them, that was the best part. If I'd had the opportunity, I would have become a physician. I would have loved medicine. Well, before I went into nursing, I wanted to be a doctor. But because of segregation, every place I applied, I was denied, even to nursing school. And that's how I ended up going to Tuskegee. A lot of these individuals were isolated, home alone, could hear the phone if you were calling to tell them that you were coming. And when you're socially isolated, you become depressed. So hearing aids are invaluable to me. We've had five consultants covering seven stores uh, come down and volunteer. We had three in testing week, and then we had uh, two in delivery week. Um, so Justin, our floating consultant, will travel there uh, every other week for several months and, and probably beyond that, depending on the needs there, and check those aids if someone doesn't have the ability to get to us. Our goal here was to try to use what we were doing in the community so that other businesses, other areas would look and say, maybe we can do something to give back and make a difference to be able to perhaps change the community or change the state or hey, change the world. As I look back at this week and what's happened, I'm honored to be a part of the Miracle Ear mission and to be able to give the gift of sound to so many people that are so deserving. I'm Clark White, and I'm proud to give the gift of sound. Thank you for giving me the gift of sound. Thank you for giving me the gift of sound. Thank you, thank you, thank you.